Hey everyone and welcome back. This is another installment of our engine teardown series. This is going to be an interesting one. This is actually the highest mileage M8 I've torn down yet. So I'm pretty excited to see what's on the inside. 80,000 miles on this one. So stick around. This is going to be a good one. Of course, it's been a while since we've uploaded a video. Sorry about that, guys. But fact is, parts have finally started coming in. We've got some bikes that have been here for quite a while waiting on a lot of our specialty parts and things to get started on it. So, of course, customers do come first. And those of you that have bikes here, thank you very much for your patience. Uh, we, we certainly appreciate you. We're going as fast as we can to get it done as quick as we can without compromising the quality of the bill. Anyway, let's get back to this one. This comes to us again from Greg in North Carolina out of a 2018 model. It is a 107, 80,000 miles on this one. All right, that's a lot of miles. We have, and he's got a few issues. So let's go through some of his notes real quick. Uh, he is obviously a long distance powerhouse kind of rider, you know, iron butts and all that type of thing. The guy rides all the time. Uh, you'll, you'll notice the handy engine stand here. He actually removed the engine from the bike himself and, and brought it to us for us to go through this process. So it's, um, the bike seems to run okay, but some of the issues that he had was apparent when he pulled up with the bike quite some time ago were a lot of loud noises coming from the bottom end. But we're really not sure exactly what those no noises are. I have a theory it's going to be one of two things. Either excessive piston slap or we might finally have a crank and rod rod bearing issue or something like that creating the noises. They were they were pretty healthy. Now he does have uh, an SNS cam plate with a 465 cam in it already. Uh, it never used any oil and he didn't mention that it was really running excessively hot. But uh, he did say that the fuel economy was terrible and the exhaust was black. And it, some of that could be tuned, but it's, it, he's been riding it that way for, for a while. So again, it could be a piston slap issue. And what I'm getting at with all this is we really don't know if this thing's something. You know, there's a lot of, uh, a, a lot of clues that, would, uh, that can lead to something and, and varying oil levels, that sort of thing. Uh, also, a, a loss of power, which he didn't say he noticed a lot of that intermittently, but an, ex an excessive reduction in fuel economy is a clue that the en engine is under excess load. So that could very well mean this one may be something a bit too, but it's primarily the really loud noise is why we're going into this one. Uh, he, he doesn't beat on the bike at all. He's a, he's a long distance touring rider and uh, you know, he's mechanically inclined as well. So, you know, he knows not to run it too hot. He knows not to push it too hard. So, uh, and, this, and the engine has always been serviced properly. He's taken very good care of it. So I'm anxious to get into this 80,000 mile M8 and see what we got. So let's get started. Ready? Because I'm going to be twisting on it.
All right, well, as you can see, we looked at the heads. It's got about an amount of carbon that I would expect to see with an engine with this kind of mileage on it. And it had some of those white crystal deposits in there, which is an indication there's a little bit of oil coming in from somewhere on top of the piston. But again, it's uh, at 80,000 miles. It's not at all bad and about what I would expect to see. So one of the things I'm doing here is I just get the piston down the bottom of the stroke. Of course, this is not measuring with a uh, with a dial bore gauge or measuring pistons, I just want to kind of get a feel for what kind of piston slap we could possibly have on the bottom. And I have to admit, it's, uh, again, I'm not measuring it right now, I'm just feeling, but it doesn't feel to be too excessive. So let's get the pistons back up and have a look at the, have a look at the cylinders. I know from the from the last video this is is kind of tough for you guys to see on camera you'll just have to trust me on this one i can still see some crosshatch in here but i you know it does have some glazing but again we're you know an eighty thousand mile engine i'm not really i'm not surprised at what i'm looking at we haven't measured it but uh, it doesn't doesn't look terrible i don't see any signs of the ring skipping uh, or anything like that. There is a bit of a glaze to it. Again, guys, we've got to remember the mileage on this thing. Not, not terrible at all. Now, if we inspect the piston, the skirts, the skirts look good on there. Uh, the wear of the rings, wear of the rings looks pretty good. Now we. Okay, this cylinder tells us a little bit of a different story. There is about, uh, now you guys probably won't be able to see it, but about halfway down in this area right here, there is a very significant hot spot in there and glazed over pretty good. So uh, it, it definitely got a bit warm and I'm, uh, we're gonna measure this of course and, and see exactly where it is, but uh, I've got a feeling that the and that lines up with right about where the skirt would be at the bottom of the stroke. So that could be some of the noise there is piston slap in that area. And we also see the same thing on the, on the opposite side. Let's see if I can somehow get this in the camera. I'll just hold a few angles. If you look halfway down the cylinder there, you'll see one area looks a little darker than the other. Right in the middle where it's glazed over pretty good. Now it would be on the top here. You might be able to see that. So, yeah, that that is definitely an area of concern. And on this piston, the skirt isn't in bad shape at all. Now, we do see a little bit more wear on the face of this one, but nothing too radical uh, none of the rings are broken and the ring seal look to have been pretty good there is a bit more carbon on this one too uh, we can I know all this is gonna fall off when I remove the piston but you can see how it's uh, there you go how it's flaking off some pretty decent chunks there uh, so we do have quite a bit more oil on top of the piston on this front cylinder, which would make sense. You know, we see the glazing on the inside of the, the glazing on the inside of the cylinder wall, we would get a little bit more, uh, more carbon here, more blow bite, right? More uh, oil infiltration on this cylinder. So I'm not surprised to see that, but we're still not seeing anything that's gonna explain a lot of noise. So let's keep going. Give you a little closer look at the piston top here. Again, yes, it does have probably a, I'm gonna say maybe around a 30 thousandths layer of carbon on the top, but nothing too terrible. 
the wrist pin fitment into the in the piston feels nice let's see how it is let's see how it is on the rod now I, I can say that the rod has quite a bit of a gold color the other thing that I can see is around the perimeter of the case uh, and we could also see it on the, the, the spigots on the cylinders there uh, quite a considerable gold color indicating she may have been getting quite a bit warm uh, we can also see it on the on the bottom of the piston you know the, some of the discoloration there so it was getting was getting a bit warm now let's see oh and inside the rod it's a very different story here uh, it's, it's, this rod got significantly hot okay I can see the discoloration in there but uh, I want to see how this wrist pin fits in the rod. What I'm looking for, you guys have heard me say it before, is that slip fit no shake. And there is some movement. Um, not a tremendous amount, but there is some there. So let's keep going. Okay, we see, uh, yeah, this piston got a little warm too, but here, I'll give you a little closer look at the top there, all right? So, give the wrist pin a good feel here. And the piston, it doesn't feel too terribly bad. We have the, the same condition inside the wrist pin bore on the rod, uh, visually. And this one does slide in there quite a bit easier than the other. And we do have a little bit of movement. <clears throat> Let's see if we had any something. We have a very, very small amount of oil touching the crank, but uh, not a ton but oh right there we have a tight spot in the crank let's see get to the bottom let's see if I can find that same spot again yep right there <laughs> there it goes and oh right there there it goes yeah we definitely have a tight spot in the crank yep there it is again okay now let's move on here And while I'm doing this, I'll uh, I'll remind you guys that uh, I'm not sure how many of you are going to be able to make it uh, make it to Sturgis, but I will uh, had a lot of people request a meet and greet, and there's quite a few customers that are going out to Sturgis, so I picked two awesome shows to be at and support while I were while I was there, and I thought it would be a great chance to get to meet some of you guys. So. Uh, I'm going to do two, uh, two meet and greet locations, right? So on the 10th, uh, we will be at the Little Evil Incorporated FXR show. That's going to be at the Still Pony Campground, uh, and I'll be there from around 12 to 3. So if you want to see a bunch of cool FXRs, performance stuff, then that's a great place to be. Steel Pony Campground for the Little Evil Incorporated FXR performance show. Uh, and then on the 11th, I'll be at the Perowitz Paint Show at the Iron Horse Saloon from 12 to 3. So always beautiful, beautiful bikes there. And uh, so that'll be on the 11th, 12 to 3, Iron Horse Saloon at the Perowitz Paint Show. Uh, we do have uh, s and Tappet cuffs in here. Great, great thing. And let's see, if, let's see if they'll walk out nice and easy for us. Now what I want to do here is feel 
See what the lifter to bore clearance just feels like, right? Now for the individual bores, uh, I, I see typical wear, I guess. Um, Ooh. Okay, that does explain, a, there was a little bit of a tight spot in this one, and I do feel there is a burr inside there on that one. That will, this will definitely have to be honed. Not sure where that burr would have come from. Something, obviously, some kind of trash got between the lifter and the bore. I don't feel it in any others, but yeah, definitely on that one. So that will have to be, that'll be ha have to be honed, and then we'll run an oversized, oversized tappet in this one. And it's, it's possible that could have been a, that could have been a contributor uh, to the noise. Lifter sticking a little bit. But we know pretty much at this point that we have a we have a, a, a crank issue, more it's a rod bearing issue more than likely. And you know it's really that again, that's not a tremendous amount. You know, we don't have any oil. Uh, there's a little bit of oil touching the crank, so there's probably maybe about six ounces, give or take, in the bottom of the sump. Or uh, well, probably about four ounces. If you remember a video we did on something where we poured the oil in and measured how many ounces it took to hit the crank. So there's probably about f maybe five or just a little over total in the bottom. So you'd have about four ounces in that sump. And then maybe another ounce or so just enough to tap the crank. So it really didn't appear to be something that bad uh, or at all. This little bit amount of oil here is, is not really uncommon. See any trash in there? That's a little too tight. That's going to strip on us. Okay, we got that one. Let's try this one more time. We're gonna have to drill that one out. And I'll warn you guys, sometimes you have to be careful. You're, if you're installing one of these cam kits yourself, there's uh, no reason to use anything other than blue Loctite in these here. And you know, 110 inch pounds roughly is more than enough. That's pretty dang tight in there. But another thing, you know, using red Loctite here and here being they're on rotating assemblies, if you only need to use a very small amount of Loctite, right? Well, what can happen, and I think we're going to be okay on this one, but what can happen, you can see the pieces there. If you use too much Loctite, that Loctite can actually weep and find its way down inside here between the crank and this gear, which, you know, is not a big deal if you never have to take it apart again. But sometimes I've gotten in here and found that these are stuck with red Loctite. Then I have to heat everything to get it apart. Uh, we will drill, of course, drill this out at a later date. But uh, I'm going to see... If, uh, for the sake of the video here, uh, see if I can get the cam plate out without taking that off. And then I'll, I'll do that separately. You know, we're going to, we're going to replace this tensioner anyway. So I'm just going to open it up for now so we can get this apart. Let's take a look at the cam. The cam itself's got a, a little bit of wear to it, but for the mileage, I'm not at all, I'm not at all surprised. The cam looks good. Now, as far as the, as far as the bushing and the cam plate, uh, no burrs, no mushrooming on the outside or anything like that. That actually, inside there doesn't look too bad either. Let's keep going. All right, so we've got six thousandths run out on the crank, which, again, isn't terrible. Of course, it's not suitable for gear drive, but 
six thousandths isn't horrendous. All right, right here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yep, right there. Well, that's it, guys. I think we've figured out where the noise more than likely is. It's an interesting thing, of course. Uh, sometimes we do get surprised. Six, six and a half thousand run out. No, that's not ideal. But at the same time, it's not absolutely horrendous either. Uh, not enough really to generate a loud knocking noise. However, uh, a bad rod bearing is. But it's entirely possible. Again, most people, they, they look at crank run out as being the de, the de facto determination if the rotating assembly is good. Fact is, you can have minimal run out on your pinion shaft side. Of course, we still need to split the cases. I'll measure total indicated run out. But there's no question at this point, we've got a combination of a couple of different things. We've got the one cylinder that I showed that had all the glazing in it. And uh, of course, I'll measure those just to make certain, but there's a lot of glazing in there for that front cylinder that's going to explain the excessive oil carbon that's on top of the piston. Uh, we also have the rod, if you notice. Again, this rod is very gold. Both rods are. And uh, so the rods were getting hot. Another indication that there's potentially a bearing issue. But you have to be careful when you're checking something like this. You can't just rotate it once or twice, all right, because the bearings roll around in, in there, right? And you can see when we were disassembling it, I found that tight spot. You pull the cam, pull the cam plate. I have to rotate it a few times and look for it. Try to find it. Try to find it, and then we find it. Uh, there we go. And there it is. The rods get real stiff right there, and we can rotate it a little more, and actually free up a little bit. Well, and there you have it solves the mystery. More than likely it is a combination, a bit of a combination between the piston slap on that front cylinder where we saw that excessive glazing had a little bit of a loose fit and more of a loose fit in the front than it did in the rear. So uh, and then we also saw a little bit more wear on the skirt uh, on that one than we did on the rear. So that would explain that. The wrist pins are a little bit loose. Uh, not terrible, but a little bit. But what it comes down to is the tight spot in the rods, even though our runout's only about six, six and a half. That is more than likely the reason why it wasn't sumping. And also he had already upgraded his cam plate and oil pump. Doesn't look like he did that uh, too long ago. However, uh, the noise, yes, we've got a bad rod bearing. 80,000 miles, that's pretty impressive, really. Uh, it's a bad rod bearing. After 80,000 miles, not too bad, but that would explain the noise. It would also explain the discoloration on the rod. It would explain a little excessive heat back here uh, and turning everything gold. That uh, extra heat, bad bearing. So there we go. All right, guys, uh, again, be heading to Sturgis for a couple of weeks. If you can make it out to those two shows that I mentioned earlier, I would love to meet you and shake your hands. And for you guys that are already customers, it would be awesome to see you again. We've got a lot of other great things coming as well. There is a ton of Tool Tech Tuesday content coming. Uh, we've got, I uh, finally got a couple of the parts that I was waiting on to rebuild the transmission. If you remember the one that we, we started for Jeff quite some time ago, we finally got the part for that. So when I return from Sturgis, I'll be getting that transmission back together. That'll be one of the Tool Tech Tuesday videos and an update on all of our Skunk Series Tappets and the Tappet Fit Kits. They are in production right now. Everything's gone through testing. Everything is rocking and rolling. So Jim's is running wide open to get those together for us. When we get ready to release them, we're going to do another Tool Tech Tuesday video. We're going to talk about using the, their vacuum tap it tool to prepare the lifters for installation. I'm going to go through details on how to use the fit kit and how to adjust push rods and everything to perfection. I'm kind of considering it the the uh, uh, the tell all of push rod and uh, push rod adjustment and lifter installation. So we got a lot of good stuff coming. To all of our members, thanks a million for supporting the channel. Thanks to all of our subscribers. Guys, we're this close to 30,000 subscribers. You guys have been awesome. I love your comments. Uh, I love reading them. I, I so many of you leave great comments, and to be honest, we're just we're running wide open, working like crazy, and uh, I've tried to find time to produce more content and also to answer your questions. Uh, and and frankly, guys, there just hasn't been enough time in the day now that all these parts are coming in and and just the sheer volume of work. But uh, we are doing the best we can, and as always, thank you for your continued support. You guys are awesome. 
Ride safe, take care of yourselves and each other. Have a good one.